Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, as Tom mentioned, I have uh, been here for a month now, and this is the end of, of my time with the students at Tech, and it was a wonderful time, and I want to thank all the great students I had in my class, and also Ginger and Tom for making this possible, and of course, Bruce McEver. This uh, reading seems like a wonderful, uh, fitting, and celebratory way to have that closure. I'm going to read mostly new poems today. And I'm going to start out with some in an elegiac mood. Some of you might remember the Southern Crescent uh, was a train that, uh, an old train, a very beautiful train with a dining car and china and silverware. And it used to, part of its route was between my hometown, Gulfport, Mississippi, and Atlanta. This is the Southern Crescent. In 1959, my mother is boarding a train. She is barely 16, her one large grip bulging with homemade dresses, whisper of crinoline and lace, her name stitched inside each one. She is leaving behind the dirt roads of Mississippi, the film of red dust around her ankles, the thin whistle of wind through the floorboards of the shotgun house, the very idea of home. Ahead of her, days of travel, one town after the next, and California, a word she can't stop repeating. Over and over, she will practice meeting her father, imagine how he must look, how different now from the one photo she has of him. She will look at it once more, pulling into the station at Los Angeles, and then again and again on the platform, no one like him in sight. The year the old crescent makes its last run, my mother insists we ride it together. We leave Gulfport late morning, heading east. Years before, we rode together to meet another man, my father, waiting for us as our train derailed. I don't recall how she must have held me, how her face sank as she realized again the uncertainty of it all. That trip, too, gone wrong. Today, she is sure we can leave home, bound only for whatever awaits us, the sun now setting behind us, the rails humming like anticipation, the train pulling us toward the end of another day. I watch each small town pass before my window until the light goes and the reflection of my mother's face appears, clearer now as evening comes on, dark and certain. This poem has an epigraph from a uh, Herrick, fair daffodils, we weep to see you haste away so soon. Genus Narcissus. The road I walked home from school was dense with trees and shadow, creekside and lit by yellow daffodils, early blossoms bright against winter's last gray days. I must have known they grew wild, thought no harm in taking them, so I did gathering up as many as I could hold, then presenting them in a jar to my mother. She put them on the sill, and I sat nearby, watching light bend through the glass, day easing into evening, proud of myself for giving my mother some small thing. Childish vanity. I must have seen in them some measure of myself, the slender stems, each blossom a head lifted up toward praise or bowed to meet its reflection. Walking home those years ago, I knew nothing of Narcissus or the daffodil short spring, how they dry like graveside flowers, rustling when the wind blew, a whisper treacherous from the sill. Be taken with yourself, they said to me. Die early to my mother. Myth. I was asleep while you were dying. It's as if you slipped through some rift 
a hollow I make between my slumber and my waking, the Erebus I keep you in, still trying not to let go. You'll be dead again tomorrow, but in dreams you live, so I try taking you back into morning, sleep heavy, turning my eyes open, I find you do not follow, again and again this constant forsaking. Again and again this constant forsaking, my eyes open, I find you do not follow, you back into morning, sleep heavy, turning, but in dreams you live, so I try taking not to let go. You'll be dead again tomorrow. The Erebus I keep you in, still trying, I make between my slumber and my waking. It's as if you slip through some rift, a hollow. I was asleep while you were dying. During the height of the civil rights movement, the poet Robert Penn Warren made a pilgrimage down south, back to his south to uh, rethink I'll Take My Stand and to write his wonderful book, Segregation. Um, I've also, uh, I spent a lot of time in the Northeast in graduate school, though I'm from Mississippi, and so coming back here and also going to Mississippi has been a pilgrimage of my own. Um, this poem is called Pilgrimage, Vicksburg, Mississippi. Here, the Mississippi carved its mud-dark path, a graveyard for skeletons of sunken river boats. Here, the river changed its course, turning away from the city as one turns, forgetting from the past the abandoned bluffs, land sloping up above the river's bend, where now the Yazoo fills the Mississippi's empty bed. Here, the dead stand up in stone, white marble on Confederate Avenue. I stand on ground once hollowed by a web of caves. They must have seemed like catacombs in 1863 to the woman sitting in her parlor, candlelit underground. I can see her listening to shells explode, writing herself into history, asking what is to become of all the living things in this place. This whole city is a grave. Every spring, pilgrimage, the living come to mingle with the dead, brush against their cold shoulders in the long hallways, listen all night to their silence and indifference, relive their dying on the green battlefield. At the museum, we marvel at their clothes, preserved under glass, so much smaller than our own, as if those who wore them were only children. We sleep in their beds, the old mansions hunkered on the bluffs, draped in flowers, funereal, a blur of petals against the river's gray. The brochure in my room calls this living history. The brass plate on the door reads Prissy's room. A window frames the river's crawl toward the gulf. In my dream, the ghost of history lies down beside me, rolls over, pins me beneath a heavy arm.